Okay, so we are back and we're about to do some cleaning, post-processing on our bus. As you can see, the whole thing's printed. Got it in this little uh, chicken fryer cage in my... They're hollow, so in my wash and cure station. So I have a Creality UW02 wash and cure. Basically, it's got a spinner inside that bucket with a magnet and a corresponding spinning magnet in the base of this machine. Uh, the top it has two uh, selections, clean and cure. It's on clean right now with a fast spin. I'm going to run it for 15 minutes. Uh, so this is one of the other things you need to do when working with resin is you have to clean it after it comes out of the vats because it's covered in liquid resin. That requires isopropyl alcohol. So I get it in massive gallon containers because this takes two gallons to fill. As you can see, it then fits the entire build plate on here. There is an attachment for this particular machine that should allow you to suspend a build plate in it. It's just not compatible with my EPEX. Uh, but they sit in there just fine. They won't interfere with the fan because they're on top of that cage. And these are quite large, so it's not like they're going to slip in the cracks. Anyway, uh, a couple things when you're working with these. Gloves. And then I also have on these safety goggles. Um, this, as soon as you start pulling the pieces off the plate, you need to be wearing these. Uh, the resin is toxic. Uh, it can get flicked in your eye, trust me, and that's no fun. It burns. Uh, so always be safe when working with raw resin. Even after I clean this, I'll continue to wear the glasses and the gloves. I've had IPA flicked in my eye as well. Also not fun. Um, and these are raw until cured. And even after curing, I generally, uh, until I get them primed, I will handle them with care. So let's get the top on here. The old plastic top. The wash and cure station has a safety feature where it won't run if the top's not on. And there we go. And it might be hard to see because of how cloudy this is from all the other resin, but you can kind of see the IPAs being agitated by that fan. So it'll go through and clean, and then I will get it out, let the residual liquid drain from the pieces and dry, and then I'll put it in the same thing for curing. But when it's curing, we replace the vat with this plate with a reflective surface so that it rotates and cures the uh, miniatures. So we will let these clean and cure and then we'll be ready for to start assembly. All right, so we are ready to cure. So we're gonna, that magnetically slots right on. Now we are gonna remove our struts first and these will generally just peel off. You can kind of see they just come right off and the way that these are supported any residual pieces will be on the underside um, so that will really help with that but so this will just peel right off and then you can see we're gonna have to do some cleanup just with a bit of sanding on the bottom now I'm gonna run this for probably five minutes at a time just to uh, do one side and then flip some pieces and then do another also looks like i'll only be able to do a couple things at a time and then you can kind of see the details we got going on here this is very nice so this is some layer line some layer shifting here, not shifting, but just the lines, but you can run your finger over it and it's barely perceptible. So once you start getting some paint on these, that stuff will go away. So I'm just going to put this here upside down. And then for my machine, I set it to cure. 
I slow the rotation, and then I have to set the time. So I'm going to do five minutes and then five more. So again, we're going to put our lid on. And then I will hit play. So you can see the light bar there illuminates and this will rotate through and we'll cure it. Um, usual cure time for something large like this, I do 10 minutes, smaller stuff, I'll only do five. I'm doing five and then I'll flip and do five more with this and this should take care of everything. And then I'll do the large portion of the bus on its own and uh, then we'll have uh, assembly time. All right, as we can see, our bus is coming along nicely. Um, looks a bit of a mess, but I guess we've gone ahead and puttied up some of those cracks and whatnot. For the interior, I've put the chairs around, uh, which might seem like an odd decision, but then it still leaves a perfect amount of room for a model's base, a, a standard base to fit. You're not going to fit any super mutants in much. Actually, no, it does. So yeah, that's another reason to do it. Now, for cleaning up gaps, I've been using Milliput. So you can see we've got these gaps in the roof here. So I'm going to go ahead and show how I do that real quick. And Milliput comes in, and, and most of these epoxies come in a uh, two-part, like so. And so what we're going to do is cut off a bit of each. Don't worry about the color, that's just how it goes. And I don't need much, so I'm just going with a thin amount. And what this allows us to do is cover up these cracks and then come back once it's dried and sand them off a bit. So again, just a in piece, making sure to wrap all of these back up, and putting them back in my box. So I generally take a bit of water on my fingers, just so it doesn't adhere quite as badly to them, and we're just combining this together. Um, you'll see a lot of this with, you know, a blue and yellow stripe. You combine them till it makes green. That's your traditional green stuff. Um, any of these two-part things, and you'll see Milliput especially gets on your fingers quite a bit. But that's fine. You just want to be careful what you're touching. And that you're not tossing it around and dropping it on the floor like I do. <laughs> It's a bit slippery. Water is um, what allows you to kind of be able to work with it a bit. And so then all I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of it. I'm going to draw it out here. And we're just laying it onto that section we want to apply it to. And it doesn't take much. So I'm just trying to push it in flat. You can even wrap it into the underneath if we want. And you can actually take it and just kind of drag your a piece of it and drag it over sections like this. You can already see that you know your fingerprints are going to show up but that's fine. There we go, do that. Again, just taking some water here. Making it a little easier to work with. And we're just trying to get it to work into that gap a bit. Because so I'm just going to come back once this dries and sand the whole thing down. I'm not wor super worried about the underside. Since I have a lot left, I'll go ahead and apply some onto it, but it's not 
the be all and end all that I care about here. And we're just trying to apply that in some. You just want to work with this as much as possible while it's drying. And go back to the water as much as you need. Yeah, it's good for the underside. And we're just going to start kind of getting rid of some of the excess here. forcing it into those holes. And it's easy to do with this. Um, you can get various sculpting tools to work with this stuff as well. And that allows you to, you know, cut it and press it down without using your fingers. Same thing applies, put a bit of water on them to make sure you're not getting it too dry to begin with and to make it easier to work with. Getting a little too thin there. And I just ruined it. Okay. So that's another note. Be careful that you don't separate your pieces. <laughs> so while this is still dry, I'm going to do a really quick fix. Yep, and I snapped the tabs completely off. Okay. That glue will dry pretty quickly. And let's just make sure we're getting the rest of that putty where we want it. Alright, that should be fine. bit more on that side. And the putty will actually help secure it even. Alright, so we're just going to let that dry up and then we'll be back to sandpaper that down. Again, I use my fun little sanding tool. And then once we're done, we'll uh, take some damp cloths and wipe it down. But as you can see right now, the bus is pretty much all, it is all assembled. I've hit some of the flat surfaces with the sander a bit, just to take off the primary uh, bumps and whirls from the printer on there. And uh, once we get some primer on here, my plan is I will base coat it, coat it black and then do another spray-on coat of metal over it, and then we'll start worrying about the individual sections and colors. Uh, we also used putty to kind of seal up this section here, um, and to the stairs and everything of the two halves of the bus. So everything, it looks a bit of a mess, but like I said, once we clean this up a bit with just some water and uh, get the primer on it, and it'll look great. Alright, so here is the final result of our bus being ready to, to get uh, detail painting. So, as I said, I did a black primer and then went over it with metallic paint. You can still see a bit of the seam through there, but, you know, if you want to work harder at it, you can get rid of it. I'm lazy, so no. Uh, the side of the bus, though, as you can see, is really nicely done. Um, all of this work is really paid off uh, and smoothed that out. So now what we'll be doing is using the airbrush to kind of go in and um, add the color that goes through here and any of the other color panels. But that will be on the next part of our journey with the 3D printed bus.